the Joe Rogan experience. I grew up on a lot of shellfish, and I've noticed a lot of my New York friends can't eat shellfish. Yeah, it's real common. It's yeah. It's real common illness. But it's so good. Imagine not having shrimp. I know. That's kooky. I would have to kill myself. We found out on Fear Factor that if you're allergic to shellfish, you're also allergic to roaches. What? Yeah. I grew up with both of those. There you go. Not eating rote, but we had a shitty house. We had a, an episode of Fear Factor where we served these people in Madagascar hissing cockroaches, and Ugh. this guy's throat started closing up. Just seeing it. Yes. No. Just being around he it. Ate one. Oh, he ate one. Yeah. Oh. So they have to call the EMT, and I think they shoot you up with adrenaline. I think. That's wow. What they do. Yeah. We had. Did you have roaches in your house as a kid? Oh yeah. Me too. Yeah. They would fly. Remember that? I don't remember. Too that many might have been been New flying. Orleans thing. Oh, might I be a Louisiana thing. Yeah. That Is we that where those. you grew up? Yeah. You Cajun. grew up in New Orleans. I grew up in the heart of New Orleans. Treme was the wow. name of my neighborhood. Uh, Theo Vaughn was like more sticks outside mm-hmm. of it, but I was I was in the city. And it was terrifying. It was a rough and tumble city when I was there. Yeah. My dad got a wild hair up his ass and bought a mansion, a dilapidated mansion in a poor black neighborhood. And, you know, like no running water for a while. He turned the back half into a bed and breakfast because we ran out of money. It was a, it was a crazy. We got robbed all the time because we were the white family in the neighborhood and everybody thought we had money because of our big house. Oh. So we got robbed constantly. I walked in on a couple robberies as a kid. My, my alarm would go off at like... Two in the morning is like an eight-year-old. That's you just know there's a guy in your living room scrapping around. Oh wow! It was banana. I think that's why I'm so squirrely because that really fucked with me. Oh for sure. My bike got stolen all the time from under me. Uh, I had a transvestite nanny growing up named Enos. I know this sounds crazy, but uh, they don't use that word anymore. Was that transvestite? Well, he would. He wasn't trans. He just had women's clothing on, right. like Mrs. Doubtfire. Right, but like they don't. When was the last time you saw someone even refer to things that way? Well, what is it, drag queen? I don't know what you would call it now. I mean, it, like it's, either you're trans, or you're transgender, or you're non-binary. What are you? He was a dude. He was a big black dude. Right. He looked like Ving Rhames, but he would wear high heels and a wig. Yeah. And he would sweep the house. So was he trans? What he you, had what a would you say? dick. I Can don't you know. say trans and then it, it has it's all inclusive? Transvestite and transgender? I guess, I guess. Why not, right? Yeah, but that's a big umbrella. I think they've abandoned transvestite. But it, it has a meaning. It's the clothing, isn't yes, it? Yes, but... I don't know. What is, is it out? I looked, I, transvestism comes up on Wikipedia when I type. Oh, I love it. We've got to change three letters or else you're going to jail. Uh, transvestism. So it's all about control, these, this language. Yeah. It's all control. Well, it's certainly a big part of it. Compliance is a big part of what's going yes. on. People get mad. Compliance. They want you to comply. They call it compassion. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Cross-dresser. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Where's the compassion for the guy who lost his gig? I'm sorry for getting lost in the weeds. So uh, you had a... So uh, I had a transgender, a transvestite nanny, and he taught me everything. Like He taught me how to fight and put the seat up and like go on a date with a girl and how to do really? this with a car. Yeah, because my parents were, were always working because the house was so big they had to afford it. That's and so ridiculous. It was crazy, man. We had we had roaches and mice, and we. I remember we didn't have lights in the house. We had those like mechanic lamps in your room. That's how you really, yeah, like had a light in your room. Oh it was my a God. weird way to grow up. But then the back half was serene. It was like a bed and breakfast, and we had traveling musicians and like Asian Asian businessmen coming in. I Whoa. tried to pitch this as a show, and everybody's like, "This is too dark." <laughs> 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 Nobody would take it. But the racial tension was insane. And uh, how many times do you guys think you got robbed? Oh, I mean, you get robbed real good, like six times a year. Whoa! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! And you guys stayed. Yeah. How about this? So Enos was like my male role model, you know, this big black guy in a wig. And one time I was riding home from summer camp and, you know, these three street toughs, you know, were, put, you know, coming up next to me, three of them like, hey, man, let us try your bike. And I was like, ah, I'm good. You know, I knew what they wanted. And I was like, I'm good. No, thank you. And they're like, come on. They're doing their, their back tire or their front tire against my back. You know, that move mm-hmm. starting to skid me out a little bit. So I go, all right, all right. And these kids are 17. I'm probably like 13. And they're like, uh, all right, let me just try it. So I remember I kept my hand on the handle, and he got on it, and he's like, ah, and he just brushed my hand away and just went, check you, and rode off. And I was like, gah. So I ran home crying. And I got there, and Enos is like, what happened? I'm like, ah, a couple of kids took my bike. And it was like the fourth time. So he's like, fuck that. Get in the van. I'm like, ah, I'm good. You know, I'm so, I'm so defeated. You know, I'm so it's so emasculating. You feel like a bitch. So I was like, ah, I'm good. He's like, get in the van. We had a big van, and we're driving around the neighborhood looking for my bike. I don't want to see these guys again. I just want to let it go. And he's like, we're going to find that bike. We're driving around, and we go some back streets, and we see these kids on a stoop, like, 
taking it apart, you know, because you got to camouflage it a little. So I'm like, and he's like, is that your bike? I'm like, yeah. I'm slunched down in shotgun. Like, yeah, it's my bike. Let's just get out of here. Fuck it. Abort. And he goes up to these guys. He walks up to these guys, and he's wearing high heels, a wig, and like a V-neck, and he, he looks weird. It's the 90s. And he goes up to these guys, and they're all going, ah! They all lose it, because they're like, look at this fucking fag. They're all going crazy, and they're flipping out and call them names and stuff. And this guy was stone cold. And he goes, that's not your bike. And they go, what are you going to do about it? And this is like five kids with tools, you know? And he goes, I'm going to take it back. And they were like, uh, I don't think you are, or whatever. And I remember he put his hand on the middle bar of the bike just to kind of see what would happen, looked him in the eye, yanked it, and he said, that's what I thought, threw the bike over his shoulder, walked to the van, slid the door open, threw it in, closed the door, we drove home. Whoa. Unbelievable! I mean, talk about a 13-year-old seeing like that's like oh that's what a man is that was that changed my life wow unbelievable i never wrote it again mind you what if they beat him to death with wrenches <laughs> well then i would have stuck in the van crying i would have learned to drive real quick but uh <laughs> no i mean did he leave the keys i think he did yeah i think it was running mm -hmm. but uh i i, I just because you know when you're a kid and you see these bully types you're just like i could never beat them yeah and then to see someone beat them was so uh, it was mind-boggling I, I I I loved him ever since then. I mean, I loved him before, but uh, you still in touch with him? Now he died. He got killed in a sexual encounter. Oh wow! Like he was hooking up with a guy, and the the dong came out, and the the guy flipped and killed him. <sighs> yeah, he was like a burlesque dancer by night, so he got he got into his. You know, New Orleans is a it's a wild uh, devil of a lady, but yeah, he he was a good egg, and I'm I I needed him growing up because my I had no parents around. You know, wow. My parents are weird. I, I don't know if you noticed, but I can't make eye contact. <laughs> I've been doing it pretty good, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to connect. But uh, that Enos stuff was great. He was a cool dude. <laughs>